Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be running a few errands in our E300 and doing an overview of it. All right, so we just left the U-Pole. We're headed over to Finish Masters to get some clear for the Bronco. That way we can kind of jump back on that project. All right, so we just got to Finish Masters. All right, so we just got back to the house with our clear and parts from the U-Pole. So now we're getting ready to pull the Hellcat wheels off our 300. That way I can take them over to my buddy to get the tires dismounted and then drop them off on Monday to get powder coated. So that's going to be the plan for it. If you've already seen the paint color, we are going to end up doing our wheels silver, like a nice silver metallic. Just to kind of change it up a little bit, get away from the black. We got our Hellcat wheels off. They're over there, cleaned up, get all the mud off of them. Because our yard was a swamp for the past two to three weeks with all the rain we've been getting. So we got our wheels off. We went ahead and pulled our center caps off of them. This one I was sanding on to see if I can get some of that curbing out. And it does come out pretty well, so we should be good. So we're all loaded up, about to head over to my buddy Lawton's. He runs Strong's Tire Connect and Jeep Shop. So if you're in the area, definitely go check him out. He is the guy that mounts and balances all my tires for me. All right, so we just got back from John's. This is our 2017 E300. So under the hood, we have our turbo inline four cylinder 2.0. It's actually pretty easy to work on these. As you'll see, the turbo is just right in there. And then naturally, we just snap all the plastic covers off. So you just untwist these and you can pop it up and get to all the nastiness underneath. Change out your cabin air filter, whatever you need to do. Over here on the driver's side, it's the same thing. The two little twists. You have your fuse box, all your brake stuff, washer fluid reservoir. Then you can get to your struts and all that. So everything is pretty accessible. So if we snap our engine cover off, the four spots, just like every other one, pretty much, you can see the full engine, four cylinder, dual overhead cam, you know, nothing crazy. They make everything pretty accessible. These really aren't scary cars to work on at all. You can pretty much get to everything. It's pretty straightforward, simple. So naturally in here, we have all the blue LEDs inside, wood grain, piano black, interior trim. As you can see, this isn't really aging very well. You know, a lot of the little trim pieces that were piano black are kind of sticky, appealing, cracking, all that sort of stuff which is kind of strange being this car is five years old it has not even thirty-eight thousand miles on it yet and it's kind of already doing some of these weird things like that that just show its age one of the other weird quirky things is it shows this key fob display but that is actually the old key fob where the new one looks like this so that's kind of weird to me, but I guess whatever works. A lot of these European cars, there is kind of a little process you have to go to when you get in to start driving. Uh, usually you have to take the parking brake off down here. And then you can actually put it in gear. The other weird thing about this car that I despise is you have the little shifters up here and they're plasticky very kind of cheesy looking but that's more like a work truck has in my opinion it just seems out of place in this car and then it has the little paddles on it as well but again those seem pretty irrelevant in this car as well but as you can see the whole kind of console area is like just dull and nasty like it needs to be polished or cleaned so what is pretty cool, if you put the car in reverse, you can actually change views of the camera.
to get more range as to what exactly you're seeing when you're backing up. So I think that's kind of cool. But other than that, I find it kind of weird that in order to put the car in park, you have to push this little button on the side of the shifter and that engages park. Still just seems very strange to me instead of having a dial or a shifter in the middle like they usually do. Which you would think within all this they have going on here, they would have done that. But I guess the cheesy plastic shifter works too. But then too, I'm not a fan of this as well, and that's probably just me being picky. But we have our shifter stock over here. On this side we have our wipers, blinkers, and then we have a toggle to move the steering column up and down. Our bottom one is the cruise control. But there's an issue with that, in my opinion. So this is my view of the steering wheel. You don't even really see that cruise control stock down here to know it's there. So that was always kind of trippy when we first got the car, trying to remember that that was even there and existed. But I think one of my biggest complaints about this car is the seats in it extremely uncomfortable compared to most of the other cars we own and as you can see there's like a weird clear i don't know if that's conditioning or what they put on it but it's like peeling off on both sides and just looks horrible so in the back you can kind of see how well my daughter's car seat fits in here i mean she can fit in there but that's about it but again, in this, you don't really have the room to sit on the side of it. Being a full-size adult, you'd have to have your arm over the back of the car seat, and that's pretty uncomfortable. Inside the trunk, for example, here's our door panel that we just got back from John's, and this one is a dud. It's not going to work. This one is out of a Durango, and it is too short for his Dakota. So we're probably going to go back to the first plan we started. So that scrap, no big deal. We kind of figured that was going to happen. We were just kind of trying a few different things. So in here we have this nice little tray for... I'm not exactly sure what goes there. <laughs> and then naturally you have the latches to release the back seat and fold them down from the trunk. So that's pretty cool. Car does not have a spare tire. We have some third gen parts, scanner. So that's it for that. And that's pretty much the trunk. You have this little button to push it closed. So as far as personal opinion, the E300 is nice. You know, it's basically kind of a fancier Toyota Camry. And I know people aren't gonna like me saying that, but that's the facts. So with our turbo four cylinder, it makes about 240 horsepower roughly but keep in mind this is an e-class as well so it moves but it's not the quickest thing in the world it's adequate i would say but really the best way to explain this car is kind of a fancier toyota camry with a little more tech to it as far as other accessories you know heat and cooled seats it does have heated seats, but that's about it. It's pretty lacking otherwise, as far as, you know, cool features. Like for example, the Range Rover had heated and cooled seats, massagers, you know, all kinds of stuff. And that was a year older than this, to put that in perspective. And think about some of the other things that were on the market at that time for that kind of money, like the new body style chargers, challengers, and those came with heated and cooled seats because let me tell you this thing sitting in the sun between all the black and then the silver everything and this whole console right here gets hot like you can't even touch it if it's sitting in the sun so with that being said you know the windows are blacked out we got the sunroof with the cover closed and it still just gets scorching. So I was talking to one of my buddies about this because I kind of found this weird. Uh, when you press this button here, it actually allows you to move the passenger seat 
from the driver's side. And that just kind of strikes me as a weird option to have. But he was saying, you know, these cars, I guess in Germany, were meant to be cars you take with a driver for whatever reason. And that was so they could let the passenger out. You know, the passenger can have more leg room in the back seat. But if that was the case, wouldn't you get an S-Class? I feel like that's what they literally made the S-Class for. To me, it just strikes me as weird, the approach that they went with this car. You know, having so much plastic in it and not really the features you would kind of expect in a Mercedes E-Class. Like, I can see more of the C-Class being like this. And granted, this is more of the sport version instead of the luxury version of the E-Class, but they're very similar inside. Fun fact, when we first got this car, I was looking all over how to open and close the sunshade, looking for a button that does it. It's manual. So you have to hand do it. And I wasn't used to that. So I looked all over for buttons. I was pressing random buttons, which ironically, it does have where you can light up all sorts of things in here. So if you're looking at one of these cars, thinking about buying one for the sake of, oh, it's a nice luxury car, but it's not the S-Class, you know, too big. It's, you know, a nice median. That is not this car. It's not really luxurious at all, other than, you know, having some wood, LEDs, and leather. That, that's about it. But as far as reliability, you know, with that turbo inline four, it's a good car. Me mechanically, not really any issues at all. Uh, very easy to fix, very easy to work on. You know, in that aspect, it is a good, reliable car. But I've kind of joked around about it just being a German taxi and all sorts of things. You know, it's not my favorite thing, to be honest. I would rather have my 300 done and drive that than this because it is a ton more comfortable, has more power to it. You know, I can put a lot of the features inside of that that I would want versus this. It's just kind of lacking in that aspect. My wife absolutely hates this car. She likes how it looks, but actually riding in it, like after an hour, your back is gonna hurt in this thing. It's just very uncomfortable. You know, you don't really have the room like in a lot of the other cars. And honestly, I kind of agree with her in a lot of the aspects of we would both favor the Range Rover over this. Like if the two cars were side by side and we had to drive one that day, it would be the Range Rover for sure. Overall, it really is a good car, but it's just lacking a lot of features that the typical person would kind of expect in this. You know, a lot of the things that came in the S-Class, you would think they would put in the E. In reality, I kind of view it as a German Toyota Camry. You, you get good mileage, it's reliable. It's just kind of lacking features, you know, comforts. And that's really the easiest way to put it. So at this point, the Range Rover's gone, the black third gen Ram is gone. This one's going next week. So if you're noticing a pattern, we're getting rid of a lot of the black cars. So this isn't even hurricane weather. This is literally just about it to rain on a normal day getting this windy welcome to florida so that's my take on the e300 and what i really think about it and honestly if you're looking at buying one there is a lot of other things for the money that would be a more reasonable choice for the money i guess is the best way to put it so you know if you've known me for a while you know i am a mercedes fanboy and that's kind of how this ended up here. But honestly, this car is kind of a personal letdown for me. And this is probably going to sound stupid, but back probably 10 years ago or so, we had a 2001 E55 AMG. 
I would take that car over this one any day. More power, it was more comfortable, kind of more fun in a lot of ways. And honestly, the old AMG car kind of looked better too. But in a lot of ways, this generation E-Class kind of is what pushed me into wanting another 300 to kind of build it into more of what I would want that would suit me better. To have, you know, kind of more luxuries, but also be sporty and fun, comfortable, all that sort of stuff. And you'll notice that as you start seeing me build the 300 more and more the direction it's going. So, you know, the E300 was cool and all. It was a fun experience. And then it's not. And then you're ready to get rid of it and move on to something else. I guess we can do a little rev so you can hear it. <laughs> That'll be disappointing. Did somebody plug their vacuum in? If only I could get a Dyson sponsorship. That's that right there. That's another thing about this car. If somebody smokes in it, you can't get the smell out. Like, it's there. I don't know if anybody has a solution to that, but you can't get that smell out of the car. I'm sure I have a few AMG jokes in me right now because we do have the AMG wheels, the fancy brakes and all that. And those are 19s. As you see, E300, Mercedes emblem, no AMG badge, yeah. So, I mean, that, that's really the best way to explain this car. And that's kind of how I feel about getting rid of this car, too. It's just something else. Like, you expect a Mercedes experience with it, and this car doesn't deliver that. You hear a ton of road noise. It's uncomfortable. It just doesn't convey that feeling you would expect from it. And there's no sense having it around if it's not living up to expectation. Because think of it this way, if I would rather play check engine light roulette with a Range Rover than drive this that's actually reliable, there's an issue there. So that's all for today's video. Be sure to check back. We'll have some more videos coming soon on a few different things.